today. Did you accomplish what you hoped to in this game? I think so. I liked our energy to start the game defensively. Um, they scored a few baskets in transition defense. We were um, lost our vision and then a couple of offensive rebounds. So those are obviously key things to be as, as rock solid as you can be. But I really liked um, our uh, our defensive collectiveness, how we were active on the ball and you know, got them to the end of the shot clock and just were, were there. They weren't the uncontested shots. And so I, I encouraged them in that regard at halftime, and I thought they came out in the second half with that same kind of uh, alertness defensively. And then offensively, you know, they mixed up some zone. There was some good things happening. It's always good, you know, when the game gets separated to get other guys because we're always still looking for rotations and, you know, seven, eight, nine, um, th those kind of uh, – in our rotation. So it's good to see guys. And it's always nice to see those guys who work so hard at the very end get in. But, um, you know, with Cody, with Malachi, did a good job. It was his birthday, by the way. Uh, I told him after the game, I said, there, there's someone's birthday, a very important person's birthday today. I said, let's all wish Carla Williams a happy birthday. And everybody kind of laughed. I said, and Malachi's too. So, but what a cool day for him. Um, played well. And he had had some opportunities before and um, guard it well and did some good things. And I, I like, you know, obviously Carson, uh, I said Carson, Tane, Cody, Igor, they all came in and got, got to get some good looks at them and good minutes because they're, they're training real hard. So, um, yep, I think it accomplished what we wanted. Mike. Tony, there was obviously some frustration after the last game, and, and I know you've talked about there's going to be ups and downs and the newness, but to have a day like this, it, does your team get some momentum from that is that that good feeling something you can um hard to say i hope so you know we we um played solid basketball uh we really had a i think a, a solid a good whatever 10 days 11 days where we gave them a couple days off where we rested them but then our um our prep in terms of preparing ourselves how we went about this this longer break and now with the, the young men being done with their classes hopefully we can continue um, and I saw some carryover and some things that stuck that we really emphasize, not just what we taught, it's what you, it's not what you teach, it's what you emphasize, as the saying goes. And I saw that and um, on both ends of the floor, and that's going to be important for us. And there was a, we were, I thought, pretty efficient and purposeful, intentional in how we trained in this period over the exam break. And now we have to keep, keep chasing um, improvement and, and keep enjoying each other through the ups and downs. Not sure I've ever seen a Virginia Fairleigh Dickinson game before. What was the, was there a connection that, that led to scheduling this game? How does that uh, happen? There is a second, this is the second time we met. Uh -huh. then, when was it, what year? 1988, and I just gave you that jersey and you were probably covered in it, so I tell you what. Yes, I was, I was a senior in high school, um, probably getting ready to play um, Sheboygan North, uh, in my high school in, um, in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, or maybe Pulaski, you know, one of those. <laughs> Good. Uh, no, uh, scheduling, yeah, yeah, it just, it, you make sense. You're looking at exam breaks, um, connection. Scheduling is a, a different thing now, um, in terms of what fits and plugging things in. So, again, I'm more of, I don't do the scheduling. Ronnie Weidman, our staff, we kind of come together and talk about what makes sense coming off breaks, and it was that way. No, there wasn't. I, I will give you one connection. Their um, uh, assistant coach, I'm not sure, maybe he's their associate head coach, he took over. There was one game when Coach wasn't, Coach Greg wasn't coaching. They played um, at Manhattan. And the last game of my college career, is more than you want to know, was against Manhattan in the NIT against Coach Lapis. Steve Lapis was the head coach, and his son is on the staff here. And I shook his hands before the game, and I said, your father, uh, my coach, played against him when he was a coach in my last collegiate game in the Bronx at um, the University of Manhattan. So there was a, at least that connection. So there you go. There's a storyline for you. <laughs> where, where is Igor at in his development? And yep. can he be someone that, that helps you in, a, in ACC play? I sure hope so. Uh, you know, I, again, all those guys, I, I tell them how important that is. And I told them, you know, I said, I really like what you guys are doing out here offensively. Of course, you're playing free, knocking down shots. I said, but I think defensively, and now this group came in all of a sudden, we, we can't have a drop off or we, we need lifts. So this is, again, part of that learning process for all these guys, a lot of our players that have not played either their first years or extensive minutes in this. So, you know, again, Igor, Carson, Tane, Cody, Malachi, those guys are, you know, 
can't always play them all, but they're they're in play, um, and so that's that's important. And regarding Igor, it's nice to see he doesn't he's not again afraid to um, take a shot, which is important. You want that assertiveness, and he's got good size. And again, he's just got to keep attacking. Um, you know, being in position, being sound defensively, as does as do our whole team and all those guys. Because obviously, as you get into ACC play, the the athleticism and they'll you know a lot of teams will find matchups and they're going to try to attack you. So again, it's not a one man defense, but that's the part that he's coming. And he's a a really hard worker on his game. He trains hard outside of practice. It's kind of hard to ignore what's going on in the world of sports right now, especially yeah. in college basketball, even in the ACC. Just are you guys tightening up on any COVID sort of protocols right now, or what are your thoughts on just this is now the third season that this has been impacting you guys? Right. Um, it's going to be interesting. You know, obviously, um, all of our players are everybody's vaccinated, and we're on top of the boosters and all that. I, I don't. There's going to have to be some decisions made. Obviously, we we've been sound, Ethan. Saliba, our trainer, Dr. McKnight, our, and all of our doctors, they, we've, we've done a good job for the most part navigating it. Uh, last year it cost us at crucial times, unfortunately. And so here we are. Um, yeah, of course we'll be more sound. And I notice, I don't know if, if um, fairly, it's fairly Dickinson, I always want to say Farley, I don't know if that's the, the Midwest in me, the Wisconsin in me, but they, they were wearing, all wearing masks. I don't know if that was new, if you're going to, there's going to be more masks. Again, we'll, We'll just talk to the medical professionals. I don't know with testing. There's been different things where if you've been vaccinated, you haven't tested as much. Now I'm sure looking at pro sports, we'll have to figure it out, but um, not ideal. So, but we'll, um, we'll, we'll just do the best we can and obviously um, be smart and we've been through it too many, too many times, but there, that's the bigger thing going on than just um, basketball and all that. It's getting people healthy and keeping people out of harm's way. I don't know if you caught any of it during the first TV timeout, but Barry Parkhill was All honored right. uh, for his 51-point game, among other things. What, what has Barry meant maybe to you personally yes. in your 13 years here and, and to the program as a whole? That I can talk about for as long as you want me to because he's a special man. When we moved here 13-plus years ago, um, four houses down the street were Barry and Pat Parkhill. We moved into Glenmore. Um, I can only handle about four or five years, and I had to get out of that neighborhood. He drove me nuts. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Barry was great. He was always there. He just, you know, there's a little bit of a connection when my father coached at Wisconsin and his brother was at Penn State. I don't know if they, they never overlap, but he, he was so, so gracious. It made me feel so good. Always encouraged me. His, what he has spearheaded with fundraising, first of all, just being a basketball guy to, to help our program whenever anything, you know, has been needed a locker room renovation, just different things over the years. It's everyone in VAF, and of course it's the donors and the alumni, but, but I haven't met too many people who don't like Barry. Maybe Bob Rotella on the golf course at times. I've been in that foursome, and that's an interesting, that's, you want to hear some trash talk, and they, these young guys have nothing on, on Bob and Barry, and he's a fierce competitor, but I love Barry. He loves this university. He's meant a lot. He's on the practice gym floor. And I don't think you'd have a hard time finding people who wouldn't vote him in as, uh, as anything, whatever he wanted to be. So I'm thankful for him. And 51 points is good. He's, he said, you would have liked to coach me on the offensive end, Coach Bennett, he said, but not on the defensive end. I don't buy that because he is a fierce competitor. And uh, I'm really grateful for what Barry has meant to, to me as, a, as a, you know, a friend, but of course to the program. And um, he stays in touch with all of our guys, has them over. and. Um, not just out of fundraising things because he, he genuinely cares. And so grateful for Barry. And it's a lot of points. Coach, you mentioned those guys 7 through 10 and not wanting to drop off defensively. Yep. Is, is there something specific there? Are they not being continuous enough or not alert enough? Not, yeah, I mean, is it a mix of things? Well, sometimes it's 1 through 10 that we drop off. And I mean, that's just a, you just keep getting after it. And again, the newness of it, um, the ability, you know, to, to be in the right spots, to athletically keep guys in front and use your mind all that's just experience but yeah you know you just that sometimes when we're struggling to score a little bit we got to hang in there with our defense and so um, a lot of it's just repetitions continuity know-how and it's it's so new to most of them um, with the exception of Cody he's been in this system and you can see that and so you just keep moving that needle hopefully they'll get better and better but 
you know, again, if it was just one thing, well, this guy got beat off the dribble, he has a hard thing about, or this guy doesn't understand what it means to, you know, help on screens. There's there's a number of things, and then finish plays on the glass. Uh, all of it is is wrapped up. It's a hard way to play. I mean, good defense in any system is hard, but you're asking a lot. But it's required for us, and we need we need it all. Tony, obviously they struggled defending Gardner, um, his yeah. touch around the basket. Um, the things he did today, are they translatable to ACC play, or, or was this matchup-driven yeah. how? Some things, yes. Some things, no. I mean, some things are just, you know, you get the ball size-wise, uh, you can overpower. But we did a good job against their zone. And um, But, yeah, he plays hard. Uh, you know, I just, I just want him to keep getting better and better. And um, so I th I'd say some of it, yes. Some of it, no. That's the most honest answer I can give you. But I was excited to see him. You know, attacking, and uh, he's got a great motor. And as I said, his attitude is is really good. The one thing, you get into this college athletics and the transfer portal and all this, you can make mistakes. Um, you can look at a lot of things. Our character of our Armand and Jaden, and of course the new guys, the guys in the program, um, that's that's strong, and I love that. They're about the right things. They're about the team, and in the ups and downs, and that's what you look for. So I'm so grateful for their their attitudes and um, and again of course their their abilities and we're going to keep trying to max out everyone